Hi, my name is Talia. Welcome to Talia Nerds Out. It has been a minute since I've last recorded a booktube. Life has kind of happened. Um, happened a lot <laughs> in the last three weeks or so. So I will have a lot to talk about here. I am planning to break this up into three different videos. And I might just spread it over three different weeks. Maybe. That might work. So, or maybe you just spread it out throughout the week. I haven't made, my, made up my mind yet. But regardless, the first video, this one, will go over the books that I finished during this time period. Then the second video will cover the things that I'm reading currently. And then the third will cover books that I'm looking to read next. Whether or not I'll find some new shiny thing after I record, that's anyone's guess. Um, so, with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let me take a sip of tea. I've been having a lot of dry mouth. Um, just side effect of some medication. So, peppermint tea for the win. Peppermint is on. Whichever. Okay, so, I... <laughs> <laughs> have not been reading so much fiction lately. This is going to be a lot of nonfiction. When I can't focus, I tend to gravitate towards nonfiction. Also, I just happen to like, not, like nonfiction. I did read one fiction book, though, and I'm planning on throwing a picture up either here or here to show the cover of the book. The book's name is A Lady's Guide to Etiquette and Murder. And this is a, who did I say it's, look, it's a Countess, Countess of Harley mystery. And that's the first one in the series. I borrowed it from the library, an ebook form. Um, I forget which app I used. I think I used Libby that time. Um, it was a very quick read. I really enjoyed it. I found the book by accident. I was, I think I was actually looking for a history book and it came up or maybe I was, maybe someone had mentioned a, on book two, maybe someone mentioned a um, historical fiction they liked. And I'm really hit or miss with historical fiction. I haven't had a whole lot of luck with people writing in a style that I feel uh, jives with the period, if that makes any sense. Or I'll find the characters to be poorly sketched, maybe because they're focusing so much on the era that they, or in the clothes or something like that, that they don't give the characters themselves enough depth. So I came in to A Lady's Guide to Etiquette and Murder, open-minded but a little bit cautious because I had read last time if you recall I tried another nonfiction. I think set during a similar time period they're both Victorian although the other one might have been now I think about it Regency um it was do I have it here um I don't think I wrote it down I um I don't see it here. Let me see if I can find the title. It was another um, book that I had. I tried this one on Hoopla. And it looked good. I think it was another thing where I was searching for something. Or someone had suggested it. Uh, the book was And Dangerous to Know by Darcy Wilde. And I believe this one was Regency. Um, let's see. It might not pull up for me. And they just know. Um, yeah, this one was Regency. So I was really hopeful because I like the Regency era. Um, but I was rather disappointed. I felt like the characters weren't very well drawn. Um, they just felt kind of flat to me. But when I picked up A Lady's Guide to Etiquette and Murder, they started right off with a strong character. I really enjoy um, the Countess of Harley. I believe her name is Frances. It's been a, ha a while since I've read it. 
So I am going to read the rest of the series. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So five stars for me. If you like historical fiction, and especially Victorian era murder mysteries, uh, check this one out. I don't know if they're all murder mysteries. This one was. But they all have cute titles like A Lady's Guide to Etiquette and Murder, um, A Lady's Guide to Gossip and Murder. Okay, it looks like they're murder mysteries like Agatha Christie's are a lot of times. So I recommend it. And the author's name is Diane Freeman. And it's Diane spelled D-I-A-N-N-E and not, um, instead of D-I-A-N-E. So after that, I mostly read, actually, after that, I only read nonfiction. So the first one that I finished, yeah, I think this is in order of finishing. It was an audiobook. I could only get this in audiobook form, although it worked out for me that way. I saw this on Goodreads. I follow um, Too Fond of Books on Goodreads. I think I mentioned this last time. And she was reading The Invention of Murder, How the Victorians Reveled in Death and Detection and Created Modern Crime. And this is a book by Judith Flanders. This was a five-star book for me. And I'll put the cover up either here or here. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I really loved how each murder, as you progress through time, you could see how things change. First of all, of course, in the methodology, then in the way society reacted to it, first the man on the street, then the press, then how it affected entertainment, like plays and books, things like that. And it was just, oh, you had commentators like Charles Dickens. It was really fascinating, a sociological view of murder in Victorian England. So highly recommend. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I was kind of sorry to finish it. The next one I read, another drink of tea, was another audiobook, another one I borrowed from the library. It's called My Lobotomy. Now, I had listened to long time ago. I want to say I was still working night shift, um, so quite a while ago. And it was an NPR show talking about lobotomies, particularly uh, the lobotomy experience of this young one man who had been taken to have a lobotomy when he was like 12 by his stepmother. Um, and then uh, he went and in this NPR uh, show, he had gone and interviewed different people who had either been lobotomized or who had um, had, who had family members who were lobotomized and how it affected their lives. And the lobotomy in particular that he was covering was the ice pick lobotomy. Um, and this was, this was doc the doctor who did the ice pick lobotomy was very much of a showman. He would take videos while he had the ice picks stuck in the person's face. Um, so yeah, it pretty gruesome. The the I think this man's uh, case was one of the last few cases that this doctor got away with. Um, but I had really enjoyed the NPR show. So later on, when I was looking through my hoopla and I saw come up the audiobook My Lobotomy, I had to pick it up, borrow it to listen to it. It ended up being 4.5 stars for me, not because it wasn't good. It was just hard to... He, ha he demonstrates throughout his life, and there are slight spoilers here, self-destructive behavior and... It was, first of all, for a little while, I lost track of where this connected to his lobotomy, but in the end, and with the epilogue, he tied everything together well and in a satisfying way. But prior to that point, it was a bit hard to read because of the different ways he managed to, the different ways he managed to mess up things in his life. Um, but it is an interesting book. I gave it 4.5 stars. I possibly could have given it a bit lower because it was a hard one for me to uh, listen to until we got to the very end. But very good story. Um, 
if you are not familiar with this man's story, and I don't remember who the, who he, what his name was. Um, let's see. His name. Let me look at books I finished. Um, 76 books. Okay, his name, uh, Howard Dully. Um, so, his story is a story worth hearing, even if it's a difficult story to listen to for a while. The next one that, um, I, I think I read this one versus listening to it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yes, I did, because I own this one. Uh, it's Ritual Myths. Rituals and Myths in Nursing, A Social History by Claire Laurent. And I think I talked about this one last time. And it was another one that I initially heard of from Too Fond of Books. Um, but by the time I saw her reading it on Goodreads, it reminded me again that, oh, yeah, I picked this up when she was talking about books for uh, nurses um, during the month of May. I did enjoy this. I won't go too much into this because I talked about it last time. But it was very enjoyable to listen to uh, all the differences. First of all, the history of nursing as it went through the years and different changes, but also the difference between British nursing and American nursing, Just even if it was just terminology. So I enjoyed that. I can't remember what rating I gave it on Goodreads. I mean, it probably was a 4.5 to 5. Um, now the next one was one that I listened to, even though I own this book physically, the type was so small that when I saw it um, in the library as an audiobook, I've decided to listen to it this, that way because I really enjoyed Dan Jones's last book that I read, um, as, it, or listened to as an audiobook. I had read, I had listened to the Templars last time I had listened to one of his books. So this time... I decided that I would listen to The Words of the Roses, The Fall of the Plantagenets, and The Rise of the Tudors. Like I said, I already own the physical book, but the type is so small that I knew I wasn't going to read it if I <laughs> decided to read my physical book. This was a five-star book for me. I really enjoy listening to Dan Jones's books. Sometimes I'd have to back up if I was a little bit tired, but I felt like I got a, a pretty um, full view of the time period. Now, a lot of it were, was things that I was already familiar with because I've read books on this time period before. I like reading different books on things that I'm already familiar with in history because it gives me like a different camera view of the same event, and then I can build my own understanding based on different historians um, different biases and um, narratives. I prefer that to just taking one point of view and deciding that that's the one that exists. So I am, I was already familiar with this time period going in, although I had not read as much of this time period as earlier time periods. But yeah, I really enjoyed that. And then I finally finished... Why did I leave it over there? Okay, hang on. Okay, I finally finished The Heart Healers. Let's see, my light's kind of, there we go. The Misfits, Mavericks, and Rebels Who Created the Great Medical Breakthrough of Our Lives. And The Greatest Medical Breakthrough of Our Lives by James S. Forrester, M.D. And I think there's a little bit of glare from my light, but. Oh, there we go. That's better. So. I am so glad that I decided that instead of finishing this book on, um, this as an audio book on Hoopla, I decided to pick it up. Because I thoroughly enjoyed this. For one thing, I love a good story. And this has a ton of good stories. Some of them 
can bring you, um, you know, can make you tearful because they're so meaningful. Um, but beyond that, I like uh, good history, but also good medical history. Things that I can see where we started off and now where we are now, where we've progressed. And cardiac history, that's going to have a special place, well, pun not intended, a special place in my heart. I started off my nursing career over 10 years ago as a cardiac telemetry nurse. Talk about, uh, you know, <laughs> starting off, uh, starting off rough. It was, it was something else. Uh, you really were forced to learn quickly and learn to, uh, learn to deal with a lot of stress. But because of my experiences, my earlier experience as a nurse, heart is very, um, very important to me. And I really enjoyed seeing things that I, um, have been familiar with on a professional level, seeing where that came from and who was behind it. Um, yeah, the type of people it takes to make breakthroughs happen. So even if you don't particularly care about medical history, you just like to hear about innovators. This is a book of some amazing innovators, the unsung heroes of our day and age. So highly recommend The Heart Healers. Um, I think that is actually it for FOs. I just heard someone come through the door, so I will come back and record the second section later. You have a very blessed day and I will Next time I record, it will be for what I'm reading now. God bless. Bye.